All right, in this video, we're working on a John Deere LT180 riding lawnmower. Reports are that it will not start, um, and that's all I know. So we're gonna start troubleshooting. All right, first thing I wanna do is check the oil. Make sure we got oil in it, and we do. And actually, it looks like it's a little bit overfilled. Let's try to start it. Full choke. Brake is on, PTO is not engaged. A moth flew out. <laughs> it's trying to start. So yeah, it's trying to kick over, but it's not. So let's move the air filter. And, uh, the pre-filter is a little dirty, nothing too bad. Oh, a little wing nut. A little different style on this one. So I sprayed a little bit of starting fluid in the carburetor. And now it is backfiring out of the exhaust, or excuse me, out of the, the carburetor. So good. All right, didn't show it, but I took the whole front of the mower off, the, the deck lid, whatever you want to call it on these. But I want to make sure gas is getting from the fuel pump to the carburetor. So I'm just going to disconnect that. And then we're just going to crank it over and we're going to see if fuel comes out. And it is. All right, good. Okay, so at this point in my troubleshooting, I'm thinking it could be something with the valves, but also on these carburetors is usually a fuel shutoff um, little piece. And maybe that is broken, not letting any gas up through the carburetor. So I wanna check that. So I'm gonna pull the shroud off. And if that's not the case, then we will go to valves. So I want to make sure voltage is getting to the piece. And this is the wire that hooks onto it. So I got my positive lead in there. And then I'm just taking my negative lead and I'm touching the ground on the battery. And we're getting voltage there. So that is good. So now what I want to do is take this guy off. And we should be able to do it with the carburetor on there. Maybe just a pair of pliers to get it done. Yeah. Let's see if any gas comes out. Some. All right, so next thing you need to do, get a nine volt battery, hook the positive side of the battery to the clip on the bottom, and then just have another wire for your ground. Hold it to the negative side of the battery and then touch that oops, to this piece right here because when it bolts onto the carburetor, the carburetor is grounded out and that's what grounds it. And I can see a little bit of sparking. So definitely voltage going through there and that pin should go in, should go down because right now it's extended. So it's not letting any gas come from the bottom of the carburetor up through the main jet. So when you put the nine volts to it, that should ret retract and it's not. So that's what's going on. No gas is making it past the bottom of the carburetor. So these are like, I guess they're designed to prevent backfiring. So when you turn the key off, this plunger goes up. Now gas can't flow in. 
mower can't backfire. I've watched several videos online. Does it work? I guess the engineers just designed it that way for a reason, but this part is bad. So what I usually do is I delete this. So we just, either, I think I can pull, maybe pull this one out. Let's see. Sometimes they don't want to come out and I end up just, I guess, cutting them off, <laughs> filing them off. Even better yet, probably you can just take these snips and just probably clip part of it and just clip it off. All right, finally got it off. So you can see now, just a little stub down there. Let's go put it back on. So just finger tighten that on there and use your pliers or a wrench or whatever you grabbed to get it off. Just snug it back on. This wire technically does nothing now but we'll put it back on for good measure so we don't have a live wire just dangling about. And I'm not gonna put all this, the shroud on yet because if this isn't the issue for whatever reason, then that gives us easier access to everything else here. Looks like we're gonna need some little spacers to do this without putting it all back together. Or, Actually, we can get away with just putting this on for right now. Let's give a little starting fluid. All right, it's gotta be something with valves. You saw that little fireball come out there. Something is not right. So let's start on this side. Oh, I should have started with valves, dang it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Intake side of the cylinder that rocker arm is not on the arm. Thus, it is not going to start. So let's pull this plug. All right, next we just need to get this cylinder at top dead center. I also removed the spark plug on the other cylinder just so the engine's not making compression because they need to be able to easily spin it over. I got a little skewer stick that I use and I'll put that down until I feel the top of the piston and I'll spin the motor. I can feel it coming up. There's that. Let's see, when I go back, piston should be going down. And there goes the exhaust valve. So that tells me that it's exhausting. Come back up. We should see, well, we won't see because there's no pressure. So let me put pressure on the intake. All right, so the intake just went in. So my exhaust should be coming here. Yep, there's my exhaust. 
There's the intake. So now, when that piston goes back down, comes back up, it'll reach the top, goes back down just a little. So there's top dead center. And we can now check the valves. So now I need to look up what that gap should be. And even before I go and check what those clearances should be, you'll notice the exhaust, it's, that valve is moving great. Here's the intake. I can move the spring. I can't move the valve. So the valve has locked up in the, the valve guide. It's bent, something has happened. So why we got that side apart? Let's take off this side. Let's check this side out. Hopefully this one's all intact. Yep, there's our exhaust and there's our intake. Now it's not at top dead center over here, so there's no slack in there, but that is good. So let's just put this back on for right now. So we just need to start removing stuff off here to get to this head. So we got a, you know, a shroud here. Just kind of have to see where it's all bolted up. So it looks like you can just kind of set it aside there and put this back in there. We got the intake. Got a piece, a couple pieces right over here that hold on some uh, brackets and stuff for the carburetor. And then we got the exhaust, which of course is way down underneath here. Let's see how hard that's gonna be to get that off. All right, well, first bolt, or excuse me, First nut on the exhaust is not too bad. The question becomes is once I loosen this head up, is it gonna move enough with the exhaust mounted or am I gonna have to remove the exhaust? So at this point, I got the exhaust bolts off. Got all the little screws and stuff that hold on this, you know, pieces for the carburetor, shrouding, things like that. So now I'm loosening the head bolts. I was kind of like, why is this not coming off? Because there's one more bolt right here. And let's make sure there's not another one. There it goes. Ah, imagine that. <laughs> uh, so we get these push rods. Out of the way. All right, let's go inspect this valve. All right, so here's our intake that will not move. You can see the exhaust moving great. 
intake not so much. So should be able to take the spring, pop the keepers off. A little trick, tricky to do that one-handed. There they go. Set these aside, don't lose that. We may or may not be using it again. Take my hammer and just Oh yeah, look at that. Yuck. Something was not running right for quite a bit of time. Let's pull the, let's pull the exhaust out too while we're here. We'll see, I'll just be able to push the exhaust out. Looks fine. So my thought is, you know, we're running bad gas through the engine. You know, if it's really old and it's like turpentine, that's building up on the stem. Um, also, you know, it was is the engine being serviced on a regular basis, oil being changed? This valve, Visually, looks bent to me. Maybe not, but I think we'll just put the exhaust in the intake here. Yeah, it's moving fine. I'm almost wondering if I clean this up and oil it, we'll go back in and then clean that up in there. All right, so at this point, I have taken the little wire brush to it. Um, I've also used some 200 sandpaper and gone around, cleaned it up. There's nothing on the stem anymore. I actually put a little bit of oil on it, put it back down in there, and it's moving great. It's not binding. Um, I put this next to a square that I have just to kind of, you know, look to see if it's bent. I've had some where I can see the curvature. This does not look bent. So I think we're just going to put it back in and... Uh, Go with it, send it. So when you're by yourself, you're gonna need one of these little uh, valve spring compressors. That part goes on the valve and this part up top goes in this little piece. And then you can Start screwing this in. It's kind of a pain to get it going, but once you get tension on it, doesn't want to seem to stay in there. Get in there. That's got to go like that.
Hey, the camera works not the best. I don't have any way to move the camera and try to do this all at the same time. So when I got some grease, you can always put grease right on the inside of this keeper. And then that way, when you set it in here, hopefully it will stay in position. This one did not go, it needs to come up. You can see this is a big old balancing act there. So as you can see the keepers in there, kind of get the spring somewhat centered and then release the pressure. So I'm unscrewing on this backside and they didn't catch. So I screw it back down. Try it again. Got it that time. Woo! <laughs> All right, we got pretty lucky. The, the head gasket looks really good. I normally don't reuse those, but you know what? we're gonna go with it here. I'm sure there's a torque spec for these head bolts. Just get them a little tight, snug them up, snug them up again, just kind of just go around. Once you got that tight, just go the way you came. Just give them a good snug. Next, we're gonna put these push rods back in. And I'm assuming this intake is gonna be way out. That's okay. All right, now let's go look up the specs and what the intake and the exhaust gap should be. All right, so our intake should be anywhere from 0.004 to 0 0.006 inches. So I'm gonna use my 0 0.005. And yeah, I, and I cannot get it through. And then the exhaust 
should be 0 0.009 to 0 0.011. So we'll do my 0 0.010. Little tight. Let's try the nine. And that nine feels good. So exhaust is perfectly fine. So we will adjust this intake. So you just need a 14 millimeter wrench, loosen this, and I got a little Allen wrench in the center. So we're gonna back that out, check our gap, too much. this back in son All right. so we want to tighten that right there So now I'm holding the wrench steel and just tightening that center. And once you get it tight, you recheck it. And that's some good drag right there. Put our gasket back on. Put our valve cover back on. Might be easier to put our gasket on this side first. And put that back on. All right, and while we have all this off, we might as well put the other cylinder at top dead center and check the intake and exhaust on that one as well. Okay, well, the valves were way out of adjustment on the other side. So I got those dialed in. So now I just got to put everything back together. And actually, what I decided to do was put the spark plugs back in Put the air intake piece back on so I could tighten that carburetor up. I don't have the exhaust on yet, but it's kind of like my mantra when I, if you ever watch one of my snowblower videos, I always get it back together enough. I can try to start it and see what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, it's probably gonna be really loud, no exhaust, but I'm gonna see if this thing will start. I don't have even all the, the choke and all that jazz back on there right. All right, as you saw, I had to give it a little shot of starting fluid. This is because I couldn't pull the choke because this isn't all hooked up. But it started up. It's running. So now I just got to put it all back together.